Hi friends! Welcome to another favorite today, talking about the favorites of July. Can't believe how quickly the summer is going, but I'm okay with that because screw this summer stuff. Give me fall, especially now going into lifestyle. <laughs> but before we get there, if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility, body weight training, and helping those obtain sustainable habits for the long term and not be sad. And getting into that, I also love anime clothes. A huge shout out to Aisha for recommending Steady Hands. I think I had mentioned them for the first time in my, what month was it? I think it was my April favorites and I filmed it at Maddie's house, which I'll be in soon by the way in a couple of days, where I purchased the Tanjiro and Zenitsu jackets and was anticipating Cardi Weekend. So the way Cardi Weekend works on Steady Hands is that they have, I believe it's Thursday through Sunday, where you could pre-order as much as you like. There's no limit on how many you can buy, so there's no rush to buy your favorite in case it sells out. The pre-order is open for those days, it closes on Sunday, and you have to wait a few months to receive your Orja, and I received mine from when I ordered in April, and man... I received my sweaters on Friday. It was at Bay's house, so it was killing me. When I arrived yesterday, man, I can't, listen, I can't wait for fall. I'm ready to wear these sweaters. These are medium large. I was juggling between small, medium, medium, large because I wanted it to be long, which it is. I'm very happy to say uh, 5'5", 135 pounds, that the medium large drops below my tush, which is what I wanted because I love my cardigan to be oversized and feel like a blanket. And yes, the shoulder seams drops pretty low because it is a medium large and the sleeves are long, but I don't mind it. I like that cozy feeling. We're gonna get to cozy in a minute. And I feel it just wraps me and it's just love. I bought four Giyu, Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Shinobu. I, <laughs> I also bought a few more. I'm waiting for my uh, Attack on Titan sweater, Black Bull sweater. I also bought a Spy Family sweater that's designed to look like Anya's uh, school uniform for Eden. <laughs> you know, I went a little crazy, but it's okay. And I'm just so thrilled that I did because I am beyond happy with this purchase. And as I had mentioned before, my April's favorites video, and some of you had agreed, it doesn't matter if you're an anime fan or not. It just looks fly. You know what I mean? The patterns and everything everything, they go with a large portion of my wardrobe, given the fact that I'm only wearing leggings and a Lululemon top half 90% of the time. When I decide to throw on jeans or something, it just adds an extra element of wow, woo, ha. And even if you're not an anime fan, like these designs are it. Okay, but because I am, it just takes my my weep status like up a couple of notches. And listen, I had to stop myself because there are so many designs on Steady Hands. I mean, from so many animes, from so many character inspirations, you can go nuts. So pr proceed with caution. Okay, they're soft, they're warm. Yes, they're not the most expensive type of material. And you know, I would say if you want to invest in like a, a wool cashmere sweater that you just do that, this is more to fulfill my, my anime fan heart. And for it to be uh, more than decent product, solid product, I should say, great design. And listen, you're gonna catch so many eyes. The fans are gonna be like, oh, where'd you get that? And you're like, mm -hmm. If it wasn't because it was hot, and today actually is okay, I would, I'll be wearing the sweater right now. But it is, but I know that's silly and I'll just overheat, so I'll wait. Who knows, maybe until October, because September could be a little funny, all right? There could be some days during the month where it's still hot, too hot to wear a sweater, but sometimes you just do it because you're stubborn. When I say you, me. And October is when I think the cooler days are more, well, sometimes October can be a little funny too. November is where there are more consistent cooler days. And yeah, man. So that is Steady Hands. Another lifestyle favorite is you, you're like, here she goes with Casper again. I think Casper might be introducing new products to their line because the pillow that I'm, that I'm about to show you, this is the Steady standard low loft pillow and I, I guess I should unzipper it, shall I? This was final sale 
and I'm mad at myself that I didn't just buy two because I wasn't sure if it was going to be good for me. I'm very picky with my pillows. So this is the standard low loft, low loft meaning it doesn't have as much filling. And what's special about the Casper pillow is that the actual cover itself has the filling and then you have another pillow inside. I had to buy another pillow when I was with uh, Ginger and Fudge babysitting them because I thought I'll be fine with the owner's pillows. No, I wasn't. Unfortunately, the low loft style was sold out, so I got the standard. The standard is a little too fluffy for me, a little too like, but what I did is just, I just took the inside out and used the outside or inside as two separate pillows, and that worked out for me. It's the right amount of density, fluff, because I don't, I can't have a pillow like so full and voluminous where I feel like my head just doesn't drop but I don't want it to drop so much that my neck alignment is crazy throughout the night. So I've been loving the uh, the Casper pillow, specifically the low loft. But again, they were going on final sale. Don't know if they're redesigning their pillows, if they're introducing something new to the line. In addition, you know how much I love the glow light. So I bought another one of these because it was on sale. But I also bought the uh, night light. So this plugs in and it has two functions, one that leaves it on a standard dim and an other that turns on the motion sensor where it glows brighter when you approach the light and I was like you know what let me get these because it might be something man I love me a little night light especially if it's the right type of a glow because there are some that are that blue light and it just kind of throws me off so I like this because it's a soft yellow light and it's just the right amount you for you to see right so if you wanted to use the bathroom in the middle of the night it's not going to disrupt your sleep because it's not bright enough to do so but also I think great if maybe you live with someone and they're coming home late you can have this on the dimmer function where it could grow brighter when they come in and they can kind of see or not turn on the light I you know it's one of those things where you don't think it's that important or it's just insignificant but when you actually invite these these little devices into your life and you realize oh this is better so I'm contemplating getting another pack of these because especially with Bay, I'm trying to convince him that he needs to uh dim the light because you know his iphone brightness is always on 10 looking at tv right before bed turning on the lights i'm like you don't need all that dear and i think it helps especially if someone like like bay is trying to adjust to using lesser light that is not just like turn off the lights and good luck just a little bit when it's soft and yellow i think is is perfect so that's what i've been doing i have this in my bathroom you could also have it in the kitchen or if you have a hall you could put it in the hall so that has been fantastic and i you know it has just made a tremendous difference to how i end my day and monitor my light exposure must-haves and lastly i gotta talk about renaissance beyonce dropped her album i think Friday night if I'm not mistaken and I wasn't you know what I forgot about it because when I heard break my soul for the first time and I understand it just dropped and I'm already putting it in the July favors listen I'm not gonna wait an entire month to talk about this album I'm gonna talk about it now when I heard break my soul I had mixed feelings about it I was like all right she's going into like the 90s dance direction might reflect the entire project might not maybe a standalone I don't know and when I heard other opinions sometimes it kind of influences my perspective like if I like it and they don't like it like is my taste bad or maybe it's just different I understand the critique where if you compare that to lemonade lemonade was just a lot Beyonce was letting us know she was going through it and it was an emotional project right but i think as an artist you have to evolve and you just want to try new things maybe you just want to have fun and don't want to get deep all the time so i thought break my soul was just a peek into that but boy oh boy i was not ready for the entirety of beyonce's efforts to just envelop me in as many genres as possible of music. Ballroom Vogue, jazz, funk, disco, dance, uh, like old school hip hop. There are just so many influences in this album. Each song 
they like need each other because the transitions are just fire. Each track is a gem. It has its own vibe, its own mood. They're all so distinct, but together the impact is just phenomenal. I could go track by track in terms of like what it makes me feel in terms of the influence, man. It's a no skip, no skip album. I'm that girl just starts real hard. Okay, with that sample running behind uh, Beyonce's talking, the vocals is like, okay. Cozy is like the self-love anthem, right? Comfortable in my skin, that's it. Alien Superstar is my track. Orica, we were DMing each other, just gushing over this album. And she had sent me the Sailor Moon transformation gif. And that's exact, that's exactly the type of mood that Alien Superstar puts me in. It just elevates, it helps you rise higher. It's something about it, I don't even know, man. Cuff It is like the cookout song, all right? It's the finale wedding party song. It's like the feel good, get ready song. It, it has a lot of roles. Energy feels like it should be in the Black Panther album. It has that tribal vibe about it. Break My Soul, I love the transition from Energy and Break My Soul. That's when I realized, when I heard Break My Soul together with all the other songs, I'm like, this makes sense. Definitely now having the context of the project and hearing this the track, love it. <laughs> Church Girl. Church Girl <laughs> cleverly begins with just like that church hymn type of a vibe. And then it goes to da -da 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 -da. it really, that's that's for, that's for the girls. Plastic off the sofa, it's like a love hug. Definitely wraps you and makes you feel good. Like if whatever, you know, if you're in a relationship or whatever, it's like, yeah, when things are really good, yeah. Virgo's groove is like the discotheque song for sure. Roller skating party, okay, riding your bike, rollerblading in Miami. It's just that groove. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Move is the attitude song. Move has Grace Jones and Thames on the track. What a great collaboration. Heated is that bad girl song too. Thick with a Q-U-E. Very just like bassy, full bodied, in your face. It just kind of invades right with the lyrics with the sound with everything all up in your mind definitely like just has that type i can't even put it into words it's its own thing i love it too maybe not as much as the other songs but keep in mind like when i'm ranking these songs they're all fantastic i mean they're all already starting high tier and now favors are just let's not get that copyright strike are rising a little bit higher okay pure honey Pure Honey, I, the whole album's for the gays, absolutely. But Pure Honey just is a huge nod to me uh, for uh, Ballroom Vogue. I mean, you hear like, dang, dang, dang. I don't even know what that, that sound is, but it's just distinct, right? You know when you hear that. And when I hear it, I just immediately think of Deshaun Wesley. Summer Renaissance. I think samples like an, an old song. I can't put my finger on it. I'm, my apologies, but did not research that bit. It just beautifully wraps the project. Great finale song. And like I said, beginning to end, even if you don't love all the songs and you just like a few, you still play it because the emotions that these tracks invoke, whether it's how it's produced, the lyrics, just the, again, the intention, it catches you, you can't help it. You can't help it. Even if you don't like Beyonce, you gotta give it up to Renaissance. An amazing project. I don't know when I will tire of it. I've been playing it nonstop. Who knows, who cares? I'm just in the moment, present. And this is one out of three albums, I believe, Beyonce is gonna release. I just wanna see the visuals, man. I wanna see the visuals. I wanna see this live. I wanna see everything strung together the Beyonce way that we know is going to be beyond perfection because she does nothing less for her. To have like a homecoming moment with Renaissance, I know. 
it's too much, it's too much. So that is lifestyle fam. Let's move on to nails. We gotta do the nails. I am so happy I decided to buy the Hollow Taco third anniversary gala collection. I wasn't gonna do it because I looked at all my Hollow Taco boxes. I looked at my bank account. I was like, <laughs> I looked at my steady hand sweaters and I said, you know what? Maybe you'll be fine without it. But when I saw Christine's video about her not being a YouTuber anymore and just kind of embracing this chapter in her life to accept the fact that she is now a brand owner and she's just not in that mindset anymore. And I'm like, you know what, Christine, you better do your thing. I really respected that it was hard for her because when you do something for so long and now you have to break away and she's still on YouTube but she's still on social media. So it's not like she's totally disappeared, right? Christine does her uh, Simply Pod Logical with Ben and then she does her Simply live stream. So she's very much present but I'm so happy she presented that realism with again starting a brand it's it's bigger than how it began and you have to you have to decide when you encounter you know the fork in the road in your life where you've done something for so long and you've loved it but you have to accept that if your mind is not there anymore but it's somewhere else, but it's still great. You just have to go that way. And I'm just so happy she decided to, you know, pour everything into Hollow Taco. And of course, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I gotta get this collection. And it sold out, so I purchased it at the right time. Because I would have had major FOMO if I didn't get this box, for sure. It has an iridescent finish on the envelope lining and I wore one color. I know they're still in the boxes because I keep the boxes. These are limited edition boxes. The one color that just threw me for a loop and apparently was very tough to make was featured guest. It's a white linear hollow and I had to apply three coats of this to get the uh, full opacity of the base color. I had this on for all of my Pat McGrath videos and it is beautiful. I think like a popular shade, currently sold out but will be in stock. The shades themselves are not limited. I believe that the box set just was, but fantastic if you really love Linear Hollow, but you couldn't get away with like the crazy, crazy colors. I that No wonder why it sold out. It's such a great idea to have the base color. Like it, it's white linear, but it almost looks like a white gray. It's so beautiful. But the topper that blew everyone's socks off was the reflective hollow it just might look like whatever in the bottle but when you shine a hard light on the reflective hollow it's almost like the reflective silver whatever you see on the construction worker uh vests or even like the bicycle it's it it's different okay it's different i don't know how christine managed to create that type of reflectivity she did it. I love Smoke Show too. Smoke Show has like a lot of not only hollow and glitter on top of like the gray jelly base. And although I don't have this polish on right now, I still have Hollow Taco. This is from her high tea collection. So I believe this is the chai one, the mint one, and then it's the gold flaky topper. But then I applied the matte top coat because I love when you apply a matte top coat over a flaky uh, top coat. I think it's so pretty. So yes, I don't have the third year gala collection on, but I got the hollow talk on still. And there are a few others here. I'll make sure to wear these sometime this week and, and take photos because I'm so bad taking photos of my nail polish, but that was a great collection and especially featured guests and the reflective hollow. You could wear reflective hollow on anything, even if you just wanted to purchase that top coat and go wild with your other nail polishes. Oh my gosh, because it looks like dots of light, literally dots of light coming from your nails. Yeah, process, process that. I don't know. Into the makeup, starting with the LYS bronzing stick. This is in the shade Harmony. 
for the the medium part of the spectrum i could have went with courage but you know what i like what harmony is doing it gives me the right amount of warmth a little bit of sculpt the consistency is beyond creamy a little goes a long way i demonstrated this in my top five bronzer video was it top five or top four it was i think just a favorite bronzer video this is the shade but here is the consistency and as you see just beautifully blend if you find that it's too emollient for your skin type then you can either powder first apply after or apply first and then powder after i think you can take several measures to ensure that it doesn't slide on your face it doesn't break down what have you for me it's been wonderful in terms of the color the texture just the ease of blend it kind of wraps the hollows of my cheeks and gives me the right amount of color which i love to combine with other blushes because as much as i love the nars the nars laguna cream bronzer in three fantastic but i have to be careful with what type of blush i pair that with because it could, it could get a little toasty okay but with this i have a little more wiggle room with what type of blush i pair uh, with the lys and portability is number one i spoke about this in my travel bag uh makeup videos where when it's, it's stick it's just easier to kind of pack right it doesn't take up much space it's just put it on and you're done huge favorite this month and also ooh, the final surgeons toasted blushes i have a video featuring those let me grab it where are they for release in the collection this is one out of four sublimate i only ordered three this condensate is it no yes or is it evaporate i forgot which one and exothermic sublimate was the wine leaning terracotta compared to not singe inferno how could i forget my fave inferno leans a little more red i make this comparison in the original video but i still love just like that slightly winish reddish tone of sublimate it's fantastic and again the vital surgeons toasted blush or just their uh, skin spark blush bomb formula is moussey creamy it has more like a, a soft matte finish and beautiful coloring a little goes a long way you don't need much you can be successful in applying this with your fingers or a brush i can't speak for a sponge because i have not used a sponge with this formula but i can only imagine it'll be fine super smooth and creamy as you see but look at that color it's fantastic and this is definitely just in the realm of of shades that i love to wear especially during this time of year the terracotta the roses the toastiness exothermic has like that bark kind of grungy feel about it which i think is an interesting color to wear and evaporate has like that light almost like a yellow peachy tone to it which you know slapping on where you don't want to think about much and just pfft, you got some on your cheeks Isamea Isamea dropped her collection late June but I did not receive it until July and that's what I actually have in my eyes for this video I bought the box set which included the eyeshadow palette the brow pomade the rubber lash mascara and the lip black I have been using the brow pomade but I have to find a way in or you know what maybe revisiting this product when it's not as hot because it is meant to kind of like lacquer down your brows if you want to let's say take them away put foundation on them and you know do the whole no brow look in terms of longevity i feel it's okay i have to pay better attention because i was going back and forth between my gimme brow and this brow pomade. And I find it easier to apply your brow pencil first and then the pomade after. The rubber lash I mentioned in the original video that I was going to experiment with cocktailing it with my different mascaras. And yes, it does show up better when I go in with my kill lash first because my kill lash provides that curl and structure from the get and the rubber lash is gonna give even more just like tch. My favorite combination still is my kill lash and Issa mascara. But because I discovered that applying this over the Kill Lash, I like how my lashes look. I will continue to use this mascara so it doesn't go to waste. The lip black is fantastic. It just gives like that black cherry tint to the lips, you know, out the door, ready to go. It's a little grungy and smokier than like your typically 
rose kind of dark brown lip gloss but it's still transparent and you know you don't feel the need to apply any other sort of makeup with the lip gloss it has the plumping ingredients so you feel a little tingle but it's not overwhelming thank goodness and of course the eyeshadow palette this is great I'm so happy I bought this. I love the size, the amount of textures and different colors Isamea has here. She was just unapologetically herself with this collection. She went all the way. This is the concept. This is the inspiration. Bam. I mean, the lid, it's like a female form is pushing through latex. And Isamea and the 3D artists managed to accomplish this on an eyeshadow palette. I have it on the eyes today. I've been wearing it all month. I just think it's so much fun. It just allows you room to, to play because the textures, they have impact. They have a lot of sparkle, a lot of just twinkle, but they're lightweight so you can layer them. You don't have to worry about it being chunky on the lid or heavy on the lid. And it's nice because although it looks colorful, these are earthy tones, right? I would argue you can layer these successfully without the eyes looking like, whoa party time but why not look party time every day i mean okay it's been great just experimenting with the different shadows and discovering uh different avenues you can go when creating different looks like i have this color here through the crease and although it's not a matte it still is smooth and it just works well with the beetle shell shade here like it doesn't look too much and then i apply the putty shade as like a liner here fantastic i love it it's small easy to travel with and it you just have so much at your disposal for the size and the twinkle shine thank you Ismael. next we have Suku, the entire Suku autumn winter collection. I couldn't pick out a favorite. Okay, to be more specific, you're like, at least you're really. To be more specific, two blush shades, one of the melting, one of the pure color. They're a little light, so they didn't grab my like enthusiasm as the, the vermilion colored one, like the red color, I think it was 132, and the berry colored one from the Melting Blush formula. Those are fantastic. I will still use them. I have the highlighter sticks on. I have the green tint one as like the base for that glass skin look, and the hollow pink one lower here on the cheeks. There, listen, I knew I was gonna like the highlighter sticks, okay? The eyeshadow palette. Again, I gushed over this in my Suku video, and all the videos will be posted down below, by the way. So if you want to see those swatches and me go more in depth, you can go to those videos. This collection was just wonderfully harmonious, grabbing inspiration from both autumn and winter. What does that mean? What do those colors look like? What do those textures look like? It's all in the it's all in there. I have number 14 from the sheer lipstick. I, I was saying the beige, the beige of life. This the beige of life. And the other shades too, I wore the plum shade to the gym just because I took off the eyes. I had filmed that before going to the gym. But I'm like, let me put a little lipstick on. It was so fun. It, I didn't have anything on my eyes. I just had my brows and some blush on. But just having that lipstick kind of like spruced up my entire vibe. And I was, I subscribed to that quickly. The muted red, the muted orange. I actually wore the muted red on one of my virtual classes. And I was like, this is pretty. These sheer matte lipstick colors, I don't know what it is. They're so lovely, easy to wear. It's one of those things where, you know, some lipstick colors are just a lot, okay? They might pull you to like change the outfit, change the hair, change the accessories, put on more makeup. These shades meet you where you are. Wherever you are, they don't take away, they don't add, it's just there. It's there, it works. I don't know what it is. Fantastic. I've been wearing these shades nonstop the entire collection. I, I I don't know what else to say about it. Phenomenal. So G Kiyaki version two. I have it here with the previously released Kiyaki collection. My travel brush situation is done. Finished. It's wonderful that I don't have to put so much thought now into which tools I need to bring. I had the Kiyaki set one and two. You don't need both. Blown away by two. The fact that you have the jumbo base in there, phenomenal. The brush head is the same size as it is in the Fusion set. The soft face brush 
has been my MVP brush. You know, for it to be this size, small, but it's super efficient with the blush, the highlighter, the bronzer, whatever you wanna do. And I went over this at length in my Kiyaki set video, but it's a fantastic set. Again, Sonia manages to just pour her intelligence and just knowledge into these designs and it's just a seamless experience you want to put on makeup you're excited to do so because the tools you have in hand sonia's tools will ensure that everything that gets on your face is gonna look like silk seamless smooth not splotchy easy even for those who are not confident in their makeup skills whether it be eyeshadow cheek products, whatever, is gonna look flawless because that is what a well-designed and crafted brush is supposed to do. The artist's hand is important, absolutely. We could, that's, that's a different conversation. Talking about the person who loves makeup, but you know, to have the assistance from a, a brush that is designed in a way that just does the work for you, how the bristles are arranged, the density of the brush, all that factors in, and, and yes, what mediums you use them with, what techniques, but in the end, man, no matter what Sonya G brush I pick up, it's gonna be fine. Incredible, love the set, and now I just keep all my other brushes at home. If I have a day where I'm like, I wanna bring this one, sure, I'll, I'll mix it up time to time, but Kiyaki's set is set for when I have to leave the house. Absolutely. And lastly, I mean, you know I was gonna talk about this. I had the pleasure of working with Pat McGrath Labs. They sponsored my Moonlit Seduction Mothership 10 video. When I received the email, I was like, huh? I could not process it initially, but then I, I, I was actually on my walk and I stopped move to the side, don't stop in the middle of the sidewalk, and was like, oh my goodness. And at the same time, I was like a little apprehensive because I know how, you know, sponsorship content nowadays in this space is a little weird. People usually are okay with it, but then people are not because they might have gotten burned, you know, a few years ago when creators weren't disclosing their sponsorships and were mentioning the brands that were paying for their videos that feature the said product. So I understand how the audience can be like, but it's sponsored. I get that. I get that. But I was also confident in you fam that you knew how much I invested in the brand, how much I uh, filmed with it and all that. And yes, it is sponsored with, with sponsorship content. You know, there are certain terms and conditions that you have to agree to with the brand that they want to make sure you say this and that. I have to say that the team kind of allowed me to do my thing. And you know, Moonlit Seduction is a great palette. I feel a lot of the textures, like the astral textures were easier to deal with than, than some others. But the standout is the fact that my palette is personalized. This is mine. It's mine. See, it has two A's here. It's mine. I was floored when I saw this. I could not believe it. I was like, those are my initials. So I, I thank the team for that because unexpected. But back to what I was saying, I know so many tangents in this video. I think these textures, especially these four here, are remarkable. And no, I know they're like not out of this world different from what we've seen before, but it's nice to have these smoother textures in a palette, in a mothership palette, that I feel is just more accessible in terms of use. And some people wish that Pat released those four shades in like a quad that she did for, was it a uh, holiday 2019, I believe? Those were a lot of fun. Who knows if she'll do that again? Who knows if there'll be like a Moonlit Seduction ride how it was with divine rose we were getting divine rose quads divine rose blushes who knows we're gonna do a moonlit something i don't i don't know i don't know the mattes are fantastic i love these tones this is definitely a more subdued approach from pat mcgrath labs and i already said this in in i think it's my six looks video that i feel pat released a lot of like the artistry wham bam in her first three palettes everything that followed after was just trying to address the the majority of the the makeup population who buys pat mcgrath 
they just love these shades. They love these types of shades. And I think the brand realizes that if they were to keep it in that niche, but still experiment with different shades, they can still do it with like, I think a more olive type of an undertone gig. One of you had said playing more with like the greens and the silvers, maybe it not be as literal as those colors, but shades that are inspired by those colors, I think will do very well because everyone loves the mustard and the like the olive green. You know, look at Gemini. Everyone freaking loves Gemini, but not everyone is down for that type of a melt texture. You know, not saying that the next mothership should look like Gemini, although that will be interesting to see what Pat's interpretation of Gemini would be. Hmm. All that to say, I think Moonlit Seduction is is fantastic. Some of you had said that this might be your first mothership because you were waiting for a palette that was not so much but just enough with shades that can weave in with each other well, does the thinking for you. And Moonlit Seduction Mothership 10, one of my faves, most definitely. My fave, 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 I still have to put this up against Midnight Sun, subliminal, subversive, okay? I definitely wanna put these because I love this more than Divine Rose 1 Mothership 7, most definitely. Divine Rose 1 is cool, different from what we've seen previously. And when Divine Rose 2 came out, we're like, okay, got a little heartier with the pinks. Utopian Dream, kinda like, it was like in the middle somewhere with, with the corals, but still with the pinks, but there was other stuff going on with, with Astral Moon Amethyst. Moonless Seduction is just a well-balanced interpretation of like the moon, lunar energy represented in the textures and the colors. So yeah, I love it. I know I was sponsored by Pat McGrath, but listen, it's, it's a good palette. This, this portion is not sponsored, by the way, by the brand. And that is it, friends. We've come to the end. You're like, finally, to my July favorite. Who knows what August will bring? I will keep my eyes open for all categories. You know, I love to talk about lifestyle and other things besides makeup. So perhaps I'll have more to add in next month's video. Let me know what your favorites have been for the month of July. I will see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Monthly favorites extravaganza or a vlog or steady hands video. Take care and I will see you again soon.